This is part two of the uh, lecture. Um, we want to characterize the optimal labor input L star where profits are maximized. And uh, we're going to uh, use the calculus. This is L star occurs at the peak of the profit hill. And we know that at the peak of the profit hill, um, the derivative of the profit function, again, the profit function is P F of L minus W L. And so if we differentiate this function with respect to L, um, we get P F prime of L, and I'm going to evaluate that at the optimum, L star. F prime is the derivative of F minus W. Um, that should equal zero at this profit hill point. So this is called the first order condition. The first order condition says that the derivative of the function at the maximum point is zero. Um, if you look at this point down here, and I'm going to call this L hat, that L hat also has derivative zero. That's a profit bin point. So we need to have a differentiation between the profit max point and the profit min point. And the way we will do that is through a condition that we call the second order condition. And the second order condition says the curve must bend downward, that is bold downward. So the second derivative, P F double prime of L star, and the derivative of W with respect to L is just zero. So this is the second derivative of the profit function at the maximum. That needs to be less than or equal to zero. If it's greater than zero, it's a minimum. So it needs to be less than or equal to zero at the profit maximum. That is the necessary condition. If this held as a strict inequality, so P F double prime at L star, if this was strictly less than zero, that would be sufficient for a max. So the first order condition and this um, second order condition together are sufficient for a max. Now let's um, look again at one more graph so that we um, can rule out some kind of ridiculous example. So here's L and this is dollars again. And suppose our profit function looked like this. That is, suppose it had many peaks and many valleys and you want to figure out the absolute max. The conditions that we just looked at would identify this point this point and this point. All of them are local maxes and the conditions we just looked at are just local conditions. So you need some other condition about the function itself to get a global maximum. So what we really want is that the profit function looks somewhat well behaved and this would make it the easiest if it looked like this, I didn't label this axis so let's call this dollars, if it looked like this and just had a single peak, call this a single peak function, the fancy word for single peak I believe is pseudo concave. So if the function is pseudo concave and has a single peak then those um, first and second order conditions are enough to identify the global maximum.